Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be making a compound called phenolphthalein, which is a common pH indicator. Now, I've been waiting to make this phenolphthalein forever. I've been trying to get all the materials from household materials and everything, and we finally have it. Concentrated sulfuric acid. I only have a teeny bit left, but we don't, won't need much. It was made from um, some drain cleaner. And our phenol here, we... Uh, was originally uh, originated from aspirin. This was pretty straightforward to make, but we made it over a year ago, so it's all oxidized by the air. But uh, we're going to be adding it in an excess to hopefully accommodate for any um, impurities and then to make sure all of our phthalic and hydride is reacting. And the phthalic and hydride was prepared starting from chemicals that came out of wood ashes and stuff. And um, we had, ended up making potassium permanganate with that, then oxidizing xylene and separating the orthoisomer out of it, and then decompos decomposing the orthothalic acid to thalic and hydride. Um, that's a very much condensed version of what actually happened. You'll have to go watch all the other videos if you want to see how this 0 0.58 grams of thalic and hydride was made. But it was definitely not easy. Anyhow, based on the fact that we have 0 0.58 grams of thalic and hydride here, stoichiometrically we would need 0 0.75 grams of phenol. However, that is that we, well, I mean, there's impurities here, and we want to make sure that all of our thalic and hydride is reacted. And we should be able to remove excess phenol um, in a purification step. So I'm actually going to be adding one full gram of phenol here, and then all 0.58 grams of thalic and hydride there. That should ensure that all of our thalic and hydride reacts, and that we have a good, good um, yield, hopefully. So, uh, over here, I have a small 250 milliliter beaker, which will fill with oil clamp in this small 25 milliliter round bottom flask um, and we'll heat it up in an oil bath for the reaction and then of course the sulfuric acid here um, is the, apparently after reading online this in reaction industrially is done under a uh, some sort of catalyst or you could use sulfuric acid it's the other catalyst that they use is a very complex um, mixture of a couple different compounds or you could just use uh, it's done under sulfuric acid in acidic conditions so that's what we're going to be trying today. So we'll add 0 0.58 grams, all of our thalic hydride here, into the round bottom flask, one gram of phenol into the round bottom flask, and probably four or five drops of concentrated sulfuric acid into the round bottom flask. We'll then take this, fill it the be beaker full of oil, put it outside on the hot plate, and begin heating. And hopefully we'll start to see the characteristic red color of phenolphthalein forming as the reaction takes place. So, I'll get all that ready, and I'll meet you guys outside. Okay, so it's now being heated, and we'll just stick a thermometer into the oil bath temperature so we can keep it below 180 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature at which phenol will start to boil. And we don't want to be boiling off all of our phenol, we want it to react. So we'll just make sure that we keep the temperature above 100 degrees Celsius, but below 180 degrees Celsius, so probably somewhere in the middle, so that the reaction can proceed, the water can be that's produced in the reaction can be boiled away, but that we don't boil away our phenol. That's ideally what we're going to be doing, so I'll get that all set up, and then we're just going to keep letting this sit here for a long time until something happens, hopefully. Anyhow, I'll get that all set up, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so as we can see, it's been about half an hour. The oil bath has been steady around between 140 and 150 degrees Celsius, and um, I'm constantly monitoring it with the thermometer, of course. And our solution has now turned very, very red, very dark red. Um, it, it's, it's like blood red. And um, it started out pretty light, but very quickly turned blood, blood red. And interestingly enough, at the beginning, it separated into two different layers when it wasn't red. So I'd use a stir rod and occasionally mixed around and stuff to try to get it to start reacting. And um, now it seems like it's all a one layer phase mixture. So it, does, it hasn't separated out at all anymore. So we're just going to continue heating this up for probably an hour, hour and a half or something. I don't know, we'll see. But um, that's definitely the color of phenolphthalein. I'm very excited. We're definitely producing phenolphthalein. This is definitely working, which is really, really excellent. Also, occasionally you'll just want to stir around the oil um, to ensure that it's pretty much uniform heat throughout. Anyhow, I'll continue doing the same procedure, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I heated it for about two and a half hours, and the red color has turned very, 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 like, blood red. And I'm, it's now cooling down, and I stopped heating when it started to turn kind of viscousy, and it looked like no more water was coming off. I don't really think it matters how long you heat it, but, I mean, now, as you can see by the stir rod, it's really black. 
So hopefully the reaction's done, we'll let it fully cool down, and then we're going to have to actually try to extract the phenolphthalein from leftover phenol and unreacted uh, phthalic and hydride. So I'll let this cool, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so as we can clearly see in our round bottom flask, we're left with a very dark red, pretty much black solid. And um, it's kind of goopy, but it is pretty much a solid. And this is... The, red color here is very um, characteristic of phenolphthalein. Of course, when it's in strongly acidic conditions, which it is in because we added sulfuric acid to it. Anyhow, but we're going to have to extract it, get rid of any phenol and uh, phthalic and hydride that didn't react. So, to this we're going to add probably about 10 milliliters of this uh, dichlormethane here and 10 milliliters of water. Now the dichlormethane we made in a previous video, or rather extracted, from a um, uh, typical paint solvent which you can buy at places like Home Depot um, and we're just probably gonna need about 10 milliliters or so and now the dichlormethane is immiscible with water which means they won't mix so when we add it to this hopefully what's gonna happen is the phenolphthalein which is soluble in dichlormethane will dissolve into the dichlormethane while the phenol which is soluble in water will go into the water layer then we'll be able to separate the layers remove the um, dichlormethane layer which will have our uh, phenolphthalein, and then we'll be able to purify it from there. So we're going to try this. I'm going to add in the different ingredients and whatnot, and then we'll uh, cap it with this uh, stopper here and shake it up. And um, of course, I have 80 milliliters of dichlormethane here, but we're only going to be using 10 for this step. We might use more later. We'll see. Anyhow, so I'll do that. Then I'll meet you back. Okay. So once everything was dissolved, we um, put it in the separatory funnel. Remove the lower layer. And as we can see, here is our washing of dichlormethane. And for some reason, there appears to be a layer of thicker impurities at the top or something. I'm not totally sure what that is, but we'll be able to remove it in the future. Um, anyhow, so to this, um, now that and everything was washed with a bit of dichlormethane, anything that had come in contact with the round bottom flask and any of the products. So to this, we're going to add a few milliliters of water which has a little bit of sodium hydroxide dissolved into it. This has about 0.3 grams of sodium hydroxide dissolved into it and what this is going to do is convert our phenolphthalein hopefully into the pink um, form of phenolphthalein which is when it's in a strong base. So hopefully this works. So we're just going to dump it in. Oh yes, beautiful. We can see that beautiful fuchsia color change and um, we'll just have to mix that around a bit to get everything to react. But um, hopefully what um, now that it's in its uh, um, purple form, we'll be able to remove other impurities such as uh, phthalic and hydride that wasn't used. Anyway, we're going to mix this around and make sure everything reacts, then I'll meet you back. So, as we can see, I mix it all around with a stir rod, and it is incredibly purple. Um, that's the characteristic color of phenolphthalein in a basic solution, as it's the water-soluble um, form of phenolphthalein. It's one of the salts. Um, nonetheless, what we're going to now do is this is all dissolved into the dichloromethane. However, this phenolphthalein in the purple form is much more soluble in water. And as what we previously uh, noted, water is immiscible with dichloromethane, so we should be able to remove the phenol, or the uh, phthalic and hydride by keeping it in the dichloromethane layer while taking the um, phenolphthalein and putting it up into a water layer which we can then remove the water layer and well that's a perfect separation method right there so that's what we're going to go ahead and do so I'll add uh, probably 15 milliliters of water to this so that we can hopefully get everything to go into the water layer then I'll meet you back okay so we added in uh, that water and you can now kind of see but right here is where the line of separation is. We have our upper phenolphthalein layer in water, and then we have our lower dichloromethane layer, which is almost the same color, but it is actually less purple. The camera's not picking it up very well. But this dichloromethane layer still contains a small amount of our phenolphthalein, but most of it's gone up into the water layer. So what we're now going to have to do is add this to a separatory funnel, remove the lower uh, dichloromethane layer, and save the upper aqueous layer. And I might wash the lower dichloromethane layer once more with water to remove any residual um, phenolphthalein that might still be dissolved in there. But then we should be left with our solution of phenolphthalein, which is in water. Um, it'll all be purified then and everything, and we'll be able to um, change it back into its typical white form, which is its non-salt form. Um, by adding it to a strong acid such as hydrochloric acid which will react with the sodium hydroxide and destroy any sodium hydroxide and hopefully cause the phenolphthalein to precipitate out. Um, at least that's the goal, so we're going to go ahead, 
remove the lower uh, dichloromethane layer, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so this is it. There's our lower water layer containing the uh, phenolphthalein um, salt. And you can see it's a beautiful purple, almost black color. And now all we have to add it is add it to this dilute solution of hydrochloric acid. So the solution was made by um, well, uh, diluting um, 20 milliliters of 10 more hydrochloric acid with 80 milliliters of water. And we have 100 milliliters of solution there. Anyhow, and the hydrochloric acid was simply purchased from places such as Canadian Tire or Home Depot um, as muriatic acid, and it is 10 molar. Um, nonetheless, we simply need to take our solution now, and hopefully by adding it to the uh, hydrochloric acid, it will form the uh, non-salt form of phenolphthalein, which there it is, right there, crash rate of solution. Now, interestingly enough, it is still slightly pink, but that could be other impurities, not totally sure. Nonetheless, that white um, uh, precipitate there is our phenolphthalein, our final product. So, we just have to filter it off, dry it, and we can see how much we got. I'm so excited. We actually just made phenolphthalein 100% from household materials. Um, nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead, filter this off, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so after filtering, our filter paper has phenolphthalein on it, but it's really, really thin layer, and there's not really actually that much. I don't think I could scrape any off. It's definitely there because if you take a piece of the paper and put it in a basic solution, it turns pink like this. So, definitely have phenolphthalein, but I think we might have had too much hydrochloric acid. I think the pH is too high and possibly some's dissolved in or something. So I'm going to go ahead and make another solution of sodium hydroxide and slowly add it to the hydrochloric acid using pH paper to um, test the pH and continue to lower the pH until it's hopefully um, just above neutral and hopefully more stuff will precipitate out. I'm going to do a bit of experimenting. I'll meet you guys back and tell you exactly what I do. Okay, so I figured out what to do. So I took a small amount, I believe about 30 milliliters or so, of pure ethanol, 100% um, pure, and I took our filter paper, which definitely had phenolphthalein on it, but we couldn't scrape any off. And I took that filter paper and I soaked in the ethanol, and then I squeezed out any excess ethanol, and it was left with a nice solution of phenolphthalein. Now, the solution was actually red because our phenolphthalein is still slightly impure and stuff, but we got it off the filter. So I then took that, divided it into two batches to see if this was going to work or not, and here's the second batch. It's a really, really small little beaker for boiling down, but um, the first batch is actually right here. We boiled it down to complete dryness, scraped it off, and there's our phenolphthalein. And that is indeed phenolphthalein, I'll prove it to you after we test it out and everything, I just wanted to tell you what I did. So we're also going to boil this down, just the exact same, obtain our probably also red phenolphthalein product, and um, then we'll do some testing with it. Anyhow, so that's just what I've been doing, so I'll do that, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I went ahead and weighed the phenolphthalein, and as you can see, it's all pretty nice here, and we have exactly 0 0.20 grams of phenolphthalein here, a fifth of a gram. Now, if you run through the numbers, this corresponds to a percent yield of 0. Point, or uh, sorry, 16%, um, which is based off of the thalic anhydride, and is okay. Um, I mean, I'd like to have had more, but I also can't complain because this has successfully been produced from household materials only. I actually drew up a chart. I'll quickly grab it and show it to you. Okay, so here's what I drew up. And as you can see, we have the whole reaction right here. And there's stuff on the back also um, and everything, but here is the huge, all the products and reactants and everything that were formed that eventually came together to form our thalic anhydride. Then here's the aspirin, which was uh, slowly turned into phenol, which is here. Then they came together to make the phenolphthalein. You can see a lot more work went over into forming the thalic anhydride than the phenol. Uh, nonetheless, we succeeded, and we have, <laughs> I mean, through all of these different percent yields and everything, we only got a very small amount from several pounds of chemicals and stuff. If you look on the back, you can see that everything cost about $84, um, all the materials that I used throughout this whole thing. And um, this is just a list of all the materials that I started with, and then the solvents that we needed and everything, and then I listed where you could buy all the different things and everything. Um, and then I wrote up a small thing. I don't know, I just kind of did this for fun. Um, I'll probably frame it and put it on my wall. I'm actually pretty proud of this whole synthesis, that I've done this whole thing over here. 
from household materials and everything. And I do think it's pretty impressive, honestly, that we were able to make phenolphthalein from household materials. Um, and we didn't use the uh, gloves process of extracting the bis ethyl hexyl phthalate from gloves, because that's what most people do. However, I just wasn't able to do it. The gloves just weren't working for me. So I came up with my own process of trying to make the phthalic hydride, and it looks like it worked. Um, of course, I did have some guidance through research and whatnot, but um, for the most part, I came up with this whole half over here. Uh, nonetheless, we made phenolphthalein, and it worked very well. So I would now like to go test it out. So I'm going to take a a uh, couple of grains of this phenolphthalein here, just a very small amount, and dissolve it into some very weak sodium hydroxide solutions. So we can see that bright purple color. Then we can uh, titrate it with some hydrochloric acid. And um, upon neutralizing it, the color should hopefully disappear if our phenolphthalein does indeed work. So I'll prepare that, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so just so you see how much I've taken out, I mean, you can barely actually see it. But it's right here on this piece of paper, and it is an incredibly small amount. You can see that right there. That's all we're going to be adding to our phenolphthalein solution here. And immediately upon the addition, you can see the, that nice pink color spreading out on the surface there. So I'm going to mix this around. We might have to add a bit more, we'll see. But um, we'll mix around and see if the solution turns nice and pink. Okay, so it seems to have dissolved fairly nicely to give us this light pink color. Um, I would probably add more normally, but I just, I don't know. We don't really need very much for the demonstration. You can see there's still, still some little pieces in there dissolving that it didn't fully dissolve, but it's purple enough right now to test it out. So in this pipette, I have a little bit of concentrated hydrochloric acid, 10 more. And if we drop some of this in, we may need a bit more than this, but just like that, the solution went clear. That is exactly how phenolphthalein works. Uh, basic solutions, it's a beautiful purple color. And in acidic solutions, it turns colorless. So um, it's extremely useful because you'll be able to titrate solutions so that you know exactly when you've neutralized all of your base compound or vice versa um, when you've reacted all of your acid compound, whatever that may be. And then, of course, in very, very, very strongly um, acidic solutions, it actually does turn red. And that was the color that we saw before in the original reaction mixture. That's because it was under such acidic conditions. Now, I'm not going to show that here. I just showed the simple um, um, acid-base reaction and the phenolphthalein reacting, and it worked perfectly. So, this looks like the phenolphthalein definitely works, and I'm very happy. Anyhow, so if you guys feel up to it, you can go through my whole procedure, copy everything, and try to make your own phenolphthalein. Um, it actually does work, and you really only need a small quantity. I mean, even though this is only um, a fifth of a gram, it's going to go a long way. I'll be able to use that forever. Might even dissolve it into some alcohol solution to make the addition to um, uh, solutions a bit easier. Nonetheless, that's basically how to make phenolphthalein. And I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in a future video. Oi, bye.